Ooh, shifted it. Daily, 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 boom, daily, boom, daily, solution, daily, solution, daily, solution, 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 Well done. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> I might just start adding soundtracks to my daily activities. It's really yeah. fun. If this yeah, podcast I teaches you anything. It. I think that's what it is. That's, that's what I'm going to take away <laughs> from this podcast. Take a seat. My yep. name is Ashkan. Yep. This is Graham over here. And today we are here with Mr. Russ from, what's the name of your float center? Stillwater. Stillwater. We're in, almost open. For we're almost open. I've two heard and of that place. We're, we're going to open in five weeks, two years ago today. <laughs> <laughs> and you're perfectly on track. And we're too. totally on track. <laughs> great, 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 wow. very good. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So I am opening up in a tiny town called Quincy in the Midwest. There's okay. like 40, 45,000 people. All right. So like, they're the biggest little nothing for 100 miles. And um, so if you want to do much of anything, you go to Quincy, but there's really not enough there to really like hold, like you got to come to St. Louis for cool uh -huh. stuff, right? <laughs> so. I'm like this big injection of uh, weirdness and spirituality and openness and like, let's all take a deep breath and two steps back. And I am wondering if I'm gonna blow lids off, blow doors open and people aren't gonna be able to receive um, that level of, like I'm feeling like I need to tone myself down a little <laughs> bit to be palatable to the, 55 year old Midwest housewife okay. who hasn't really looked past what's for dinner uh -huh. in a few decades. Sure. All right. Sure. So the question is should you censor yourself or should you just let it all hang out? Right. Because, like, yeah, you guys are like mind. right in the vortex of weirdness where nothing <laughs> yeah. you could ever hope to do would outweird the weirdness that's flying around. That's true. We had, we had formal Fridays for a while where we wore suits and ties into the float center, and like that might have been yeah, a little more yeah, outlandish little, yeah. than anything yeah. else that we so, did. Yeah. So quick pause, because we keep forgetting to say this. Uh, the reason that Russ is even here with us in person is because we are currently in St. Louis at the Rise Float Gathering, an awesome yep. float conference put on by the float STL dudes over here. We're doing some live live podcast episodes so strap yourself in we got some good stuff coming up here yeah yeah i know usually we get to piece it together over hours per episode we really spend the time on these you know and uh yeah so this will be a different different format um so i mean i i would say as much as possible don't you know censor yourself just let it ride huh yeah i mean i think people people understand authenticity and stuff like that like the the one area where i feel like we kind of draw the line and float on is is when people come in the door, like it almost less for the advertising and what you're putting out there into the world and more once people are in the center, like you kind of want to make sure, at least in our minds, that everyone feels comfortable. You know, like we, we don't play music, for example, for that reason. Um, it's just kind of, you know, quiet with the sound of dehumidifiers sucking all the moisture out of the air <laughs> going in the background. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason we don't have music is because we don't want, like, when people come in to have them feel like they're they're yeah. going into a specific type of place. They're like, right. they're the wrong kind of person for this type of place, right? And decor can do that and, and things like that as well. So, I don't know, I guess just as long as people are, are comfortable coming in, I would say that's the that's the most important part. And to an extent, like, Float tanks are just really weird. No matter no matter where <laughs> yeah, you are, like right. in the middle of Portland, they're also really like we're still the weird people in Portland running this float tank thing. And so, so despite whatever city you in, what the mental state of anyone who's in there is, people's perceptions, there's always a certain effort I think in running a float center that's geared towards trying to get people to consider like that they should be the ones to try this out and that it's not for just a bunch of weirdos right and you know honestly the best way i think we found to do that is just by trying to get as many people to float because there's really there's nothing that you can say that'll convince them as much as like a, a friend that they've yeah. had who goes and tries it because mm -hmm. now their brain has to try to like take like person I know who's not weird and thing that is weird and like those are the same now? Like yeah. wait, wait, my non-weird friend did this and yeah. had a good experience? Yeah. Like those are just super, super convincing testimonials when, when there's actual real world experience out there and someone's telling you to do it. And I think that's, that's a universal both challenge and strategy that I think is, is for float centers of any size city in any kind of cultural framework or anything like that. So, but, and, but I also think is there is a limit to that. Like you don't, like Graham was saying, 
like being authentic I think is a huge part of running a business and like forcing yeah. yourself to not be authentic because you're afraid of the repercussions is probably going to go worse than just being yourself and and that's the that's the tension there. that I'm feeling is I really just want to own it like I yeah. really want yeah. like you deal with it like this is me and I think it's awesome and <laughs> like if you can't handle that but you deal with it as a poor business strategy. <laughs> here's here's <laughs> like, what I'll say. I you think don't like you... hot dogs? Deal with it. Like, you know, you got to, there's, the tension I'm feeling is where that sweet spot lies. And I, I think yeah. authenticity is the word. Authenticity is really important. And it, it goes beyond just like being weird versus not being weird. I think people who want to open float centers and have a specific vibe to them, like, I really want to open a high-end salon spa experience, or I really want to open like a gym sort of experience. Like, you can't just decide that that's, the type of aesthetic you want to do. Like this stuff usually gets fueled by the fact that you're really into that and you want to provide flow to that community. And authenticity is a big part. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting in that sense too. Like I do know people who open their float centers and it is very, you know, like you walk in and there's the, the Buddha statue and there's right. incense and there's like very low lights and kind of earth tones. And like that's obviously the vibe they wanted and that's the clientele they attract. And that's working, you know, in sync with, with what, they, what they desired to provide to mm -hmm. the community. And then I know other places that are much more like they, they really thought they were going for this upscale experience. They moved into the wealthy demographic neighborhood. All their things are kind of a little more chic and well designed, you know, a lot of white, a lot of empty space. And what they find is they're just pulling like regular people in from the suburbs yeah. and like your average kind of like more like working class person who just has a li enough disposable income that they can do something like floating. And they're like, oh, maybe I didn't need to invest twice as much on my lobby construction in order to pull in this wealthy demographic I thought I was going for. But Again, it's, it's almost like the, the things you think you're, you're planning for that aren't authentic as much, where you're like, I'm making a good decision by business decision by yeah. doing this. I feel like sometimes uh -huh. those are the ones that, that pan out the least well, you know, and the ones where it's like, no, like you're really into meditation, you want to open a meditative center? Mm -hmm. Sure, like go for it. And it's different than what Ashcon and I would do, and that's, that's great, you know. Right. And we wouldn't do a good job at running. Yeah, right. Like yeah. Like, cause no. It's just no. not, that's not who we are. It's not our style. Yeah. And so being true to that, I think, is important. And I also think, there might be more weirdos out there than you think. Uh -huh. Like, like yeah, everyone's, closet weirdos. everyone's yeah. on the hunt for this, like the normal person, like the normal customer. Mm -hmm. But like, they life is just a group of weird, like everyone's weird in just a different way than somebody else. And right. so you're just connecting with some some weirdness for some group of people. And I mean, yeah, you life, could you say know? normality is just weirdness which you have familiarized yourself with. <laughs> <laughs> like your normal is the section of weird that you have familiarized and become comfortable with. Yeah. It, it, it's not independently normal or weird. It's all about, yeah. Like some that. people think it's weird to wear robes out in a business formal setting, but clearly that's a myth. Like I think <laughs> robes can be worn anywhere. Exactly. Obviously more people respect you for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no. I'll... Well, thank you. That was cool. All right, yeah, great. yeah. Hopefully that uh, yeah stumbled our way through uh, through your <laughs> question there. All right. Thank you out there for listening. If, yep. you, if you guys want to ask us more questions. Uh, you better do it fast, because we're only at this conference for like two more days. So and if you're at home and want to ask us questions, go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast and send them in there. Yeah, see you guys later. Do you guys right, have bye. the twits and the follows and the likes and all of that? Oh. They need to subscribe and link and yeah, share. Yeah, do all that all stuff. That everything stuff? Russ just said, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Do, do everything. You're welcome. <laughs> Business development. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>